Hello, welcome to the Tying Bench. My name is Mark Van Patten, and I'd like to welcome you to my fly tying room. We're going to do a really fish catch and fly today, a pretty simple one, but uh, if you ever like to fish, show, let's say, the White River down in Arkansas, Bennett Spring, right outside the spring itself, you got to have scuds. Scuds are a real popular uh, food source for trout, especially around spring sources. You'll find more scuds and sow bugs than just about anything else because of the lack of oxygen as the water comes out of the springs. Uh, mayflies and stoneflies just don't do as well in that environment. Scuds and sow bugs, they can handle a little bit better, a little tougher. So anyhow, we're going to tie a beadhead shellback scud. It's a real simple pattern. And what we're going to be using for our, our materials are an 8-aught eight, eight tan thread, a a little brass bead and I've already put it on a, a must add CO68 it's a heavy caddis uh, hook a little 2x heavy some uh, copper wire really fine and just natural deer's hair dubbing uh, which I've got in this dispenser and some scud back okay let's get this thing going I've already got the bead on and the hook in the vise and we're ready to rock and roll so let's get our thread started now we want to wrap this on around the bend. We want this guy to have that kind of shape. Now the scud has many, many appendages. So we don't, oops, we don't have to worry about legs. We're going to have lots of them, or at least the illusion of lots of them. One of the things we want to do right off the bat is, oops, the first we want to put on our copper wire. I almost put on the wrong order here. But peel off a little of this copper wire and get it trapped here where it doesn't come completely unwound on me. I can use the back of my heavy scissors because this stuff is really fine to cut off a piece. And we're going to tie it in. Now, it's very important that you tie this in the full length. And I like to tuck it in underneath the bead head and then start wrapping and wrap the full length of the hook shank with this copper wire and I'll tell you why. This copper wire is pretty smooth, pretty slick. When you start to wrap it around this fly, around the body to give it that segmented look, you have a good possibility of pulling it out and at that point it's a bit hard to reintroduce it because you've already got all your other materials in place. So by adding, by, by allowing it to be wrapped this full length it's more, less likely that it's going to fall out or pull out on you. Now I'm going to take the end of this scud back and I'm going to cut a little point on it and tie it in by that little point and I'm going to start kind of on towards me and then let it roll oops it got away from me let it roll up on top of the hook as I tie it in. I'm going to do a little pinch method here there. You want, it to, you want it to be right straight on top of the hook. Just like so. And then just kind of let that relax. I've just noticed I've got the tip of that hook point sticking straight out facing me. And I keep hanging my thread up on it. I'm going to move it back into my vise just a little bit. I don't want to cut my thread on that. There we go. Now let's get our dubbing. A little dubbing picker here. Get the natural hairs here, and natural, natural, here it is right here. Ah, that's it. Pull out a big glob of it here. You can either use dubbing wax, or when you're using natural furs, it dubs so easy. If you just dampen your fingers slightly, that's really all you need to do. Spin some on, make a dubbing noodle, and just keep adding to it. until you get it as much as you think you're going to need. And then I like to go over it loosely with some loose stuff because we got to create the illusion of a lot of appendages on this guy. And so some of the loose guard hairs are really going to help with that. And one thing I really like to do is once I get it on there is I like to spin my thread. This just kind of tightens up that a little bit. Let's get it spinning here. Just a little bit. 
Okay, and we're going to start to wrap, working our way towards that bead. And we want this pretty heavy, so don't get in too big a hurry to make your way to that bead. Build that body up. You want to really create the illusion of lots of appendages. I'm going to back up a little bit here because my dubbing kind of came loose off my thread. I want to put that back on there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now we're going to pull our shell back, scud back, right up over the top of that fly and right behind the bead, cinch it down. But only do two light wraps and then pull it tight. Now yeah, make a nice tight wrap. Let's get my thread shortened up here a little bit. Nice tight wrap right behind that bead, like so. And we can get this stuff out of the way. Let's cut it off. There we go. Now we're going to take our copper wire. We're going to counter wrap and create our segmented rib. Now I'll tell you what I like about using the copper is if you really look closely at some of these scuds, because of their diet, sometimes there's a little bit of red and a little red vein that runs through them that you can that, that that actually shows up in the water and the fish can see it too. So I like to I like to use copper instead of gold. I've been asked, you know, why don't you match it to the bead? And that's exactly why I don't. I like to create the illusion of that little red blood vein. Hemoglobin. Now, we've still got a little work to do, but we're gonna go ahead and wax it and whip finish it. Just like so. And draw it down. Cut our thread off. Now, remember that little dubbing picker I was using? I'm going to turn my fly up where I can see the bottom. And I'm going to pick out some of that dubbing that we left exposed under that shell back. And that's going to create all those little appendages that our scud is supposed to have. Legs, feelers, antennas, whatever you want to call them. All kinds of little appendages. There's like 14 dozen of those guys underneath there. Okay, there we go. That's it. Yeah, I see a little cleanup work here. It needs to be done. We'll trim this off. And we've got a shellback scud. And it's going to catch some fish. And it's going to catch a lot of fish. It's durable. That copper wire is going to really help in the durability. And all you got to do is dead drift it under a strike indicator or a dry fly, if you choose, and watch for the take. Okay, we're going to take a break and go to Mark's Tippets. We'll be back in just a couple minutes.